In this video, we're going to talk about the idea of frequency tables and histograms. Basically, a frequency table is uh, when you, uh, first off, you want to take a set of numbers, so you want to have data, and you want to break it into intervals, which are basically even sized groups. Evenly sized groups. If I were to do, um, say, 1 through 12 or something, I may say, how many numbers in that group fall between 1 and 3, and then 4 and 6, and then 7 and 9, and then maybe uh, 10 and 12. So those would be my intervals. I'm breaking it into groups of equal size. Um, in, in most cases, they're even. Occasionally, they're not, but that's what how it works. Uh, frequency is how often or how many uh, times a number falls into that group. So the number of data points in each interval. So maybe I have six of them that fall between one and three. I have five here. Uh, four here and two here. And then a frequency table, it's just a way to uh, visualize that information. So it uh, groups them in intervals and then shows the value for each interval. So it's like a, it's a table that displays the intervals and the corresponding frequencies. Basically, this. Uh, if I put uh, what each thing is, so frequency and then I'm just going to do a generic title here. So generic. I don't know what 1 and 3 equal. I was just making it up in my head. So whatever it happens to be, I'll just leave it blank, actually. Uh, so the other section should tell you uh, the frequency. So basically, this setup right here is a nice frequency table. A histogram is just a graphical representation of a frequency table. Now a histogram comes in three basic looks. The first would be uniform. And I'm just going to draw it, but I'll in when I get to the question part, I'll actually explain how to make it look. So uh, the first one is when you have a uniform is when they basically are all the same height. They can be a little bit off, but for the most part, pretty much the same height all the way through the sections. That's my histogram and it's uniform. So uniform, same. And we're talking about the height, specifically the frequencies, but whatever. Uh, the next type would be skewed. Skewed histograms would be off to one side. Have a whole bunch of stuff up here. But as it goes, it tends to sort of move out. You even have a little buffer there, but still, for the most part, a lot of it's over here. And the last type would be symmetric. Uh, symmetric sort of looks like a, a building or a um, normal distribution, if you know what that means. You tend to have one big part in the middle and then uh, the sides are pretty close and then it just sort of goes down 
So essentially you have a uh, axis of symmetry. You can break it in half. I could fold one part over the other. It doesn't have to be exact. It just has to have the general idea that it is symmetric. So you're looking for sort of a line of symmetry. Or you can fold it over. So that's enough of that. Let's do some. So the first one says that the number of eagles observed along a certain river per day over a two-week period is listed below. Uh, make a frequency table that represents the data. So I'm going to look and I see that the numbers go from about 1 to 18. Uh, a reasonable number of groups uh, probably there would be, let's say, I don't know, five groups maybe, or we could do six. So if I wanted to do six, I'd do groups of 1 to 3, 4, to 6, 7, to 9, uh, 10 to 12, 13 to 15, and 16 to 18. If you spread them out too much, you're not really going to get a good feel for it. So it's sort of, sometimes it's a little trial and error about how many things fall into it. So I need to find, oh, it goes from 0, I'm sorry, so 0 to 3. So, which spreads that one out and makes it a little bit uneven, but, you know, that's okay. So what I'm going to do is look to see how many fall in that group. So there's one, two, three, four that fall in that group. Uh, four to six, one, two. Seven to nine, eight, nine, seven, so there's three there. Uh, Ten to twelve, I've got one two of those. 13 to 15, I've got one, two of those. And uh, 16 to 18, I've got one. So that's my frequency table. It represents the data relatively well. If I wanted to combine groups together, like maybe I did 0 to 6, and then um, I did 7 to 12, and then 13 to 18. If that's the case, um, I would do 6 for this one, 5 for this one, and 3 for this one. Now, depending on what I'm trying to figure out, either one of those is a good frequency table. It just depends on what the overall outcome is supposed to be. The first one gives me much more detailed information in terms of, uh, I can get very specific. I mean, you could go down to, I guess, one in each interval, but that would seem kind of silly. Um, but I could get, I could see that the number of times an eagle has been observed, zero to three is definitely the biggest one. Whereas it doesn't seem as, between zero and six, like seeing an eagle six times is kind of a major difference between seeing it, uh, you know, six times and zero times or whatever it happens to be. So I would probably use this one just because it gives me more information uh, that's detailed you know, whatever. The last one also, the second one also makes it seem like the 16 to 18 group would pop up more often than it probably would. So that's that one. Number two, the data show below uh, shows the number of games won by a football team in each of the last 15 seasons. I need to make a histogram. So to make a histogram, you have to start out making a frequency table because they're, you know, very closely related. One's just another version of uh, the second. Actually, I might do the data below shows the average number of text messages a day. That would make more sense just because it gives me more room to work it. So uh, I have, this is text per day. And then my frequency. And here I have it going up to 22, and my lowest group is 1, so somebody's only doing 1. So I might do uh, groups of 5. So 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, um, 15 to 19, and then 20 to 24. That should get everything covered. Now I just count them. Make sure you mark them out so you can see what you're doing. Uh, one there is between 0 and 4, 
and that's it. Not a lot of low-level textures here. Uh, between 5 and 9, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, between 10 and 14, 1, 2, 3, and that's it. Um, you'll notice I'm trying to use different symbols each time. That way I can go back and assess how I got my answer just in case I need to check. Uh, 15 to 19, 1, 2, 3, and the last one, 20 to 24, 1, 2, and that's it. It's also a good idea, by the way, to check to make sure you have the right number of frequencies uh, in your table to determine that you've gotten them all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that works. That's my frequency table. Now for a histogram, I'm just going to, on the bottom, put text messages. And over here, I'm going to put frequency. So on my y-axis. So maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry for writing frequency so small. I'm kind of running out of room. Now, in my 0 to 4 group, I only have 1. So that's that. In my 5 to 9 group, I have 5. So there's mostly 5 to 9 would be the b most common number of text messages sent in our sub in our little group that we've created. And then I'll do 10 to 14 and there at 3. And then 15 to 19. There at 3 as well. And then finally 20 to 24. it only has two. So that's my histogram. Basically you just uh, set the boxes and each one of them represents one section of the frequency table. It also gives me a nice visual. I can see that uh, this one here really doesn't, uh, like the 0 to 4 group is very small. It's easier to just uh, have it there and it sort of gives me the idea that it tends to sort of you know skew out this way a little bit more so than uh, it it hits a big high point at uh, 5 to 9, but it skews higher than it does lower, which means it spreads out that way a little bit better. So that's uh, frequency tables and histograms. I'm going to see if there's any more things I need to cover. I don't think so. Oh, no, we're going to look at types really quickly. So uh, we talked about the three types, uniform, skewed versus symmetric. This one has a little bit... Sorry, I don't know why I rolled down so much. Uh, this one has a little bit of skew to it. As you can see, it sort of fades off to the right. So it goes this way. It's positively skewed a little bit. So that's that one. And for number five, which is another type, this is a perfect example, or not a perfect example, but a very good example of a uniform uh, histogram just because this one's the uniform histogram. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this is a perfect example of uniform histogram. I'm looking at another thing while I'm doing this. My apologies. I've been doing this a long time today. Uh, anyway, the uniform amount, because it's the same. You wear a uniform, looks exactly the same as everybody else's, so that's no, it's uniform. This one is symmetric. My bad. See how it sort of fades down a little bit? Any sort of like dual-sided uh, descent is sort of the way that you want to go to make sure that you have a skewed, or sorry, symmetric uh, representation of your histogram. So that's it. Frequency tables, histograms, not that big of a deal. Uh, I'm sure you'll do fine.